In this video, we'll be talking about the other operations that uh, SQL supports, that of the CRUD as a kind of a fun acronym um, operations. So what is CRUD? Well, those are the four fundamental operations that apply to a given database. You need to be able to read data from the database using the select statement. You need to be able to insert new data into the database it's called insert. You need to be able to update existing data, change rows that are already in tables in your database using the update statement, which we'll talk about today. And you also need to know how to remove data, how to remove rows from a table using the delete statement. So collectively, these are referred to as CRUD for create, read, update, delete. And it's kind of fun if I was trying to Google for um, images for CRUD and I found this. Um, apparently this was some sort of um, what, an unholy union of sex and horror from the depths of space um, um, playing in Detroit, funnily enough. Okay, so let's talk about insert into, a statement that we've already covered. Um, insert into is used to add new data, new rows to a database, which I've written right here. Insert into can contain values for some or all of the columns of that table. This is something I haven't told you about. You can leave gaps um, in the column. So for instance, if I'm adding a new student to the class, if I don't know their first name, I cannot specify their first name. Another interesting thing that you can do with insert is you can actually use a select statement to generate the data to be added to a given table, um, which we'll show you in a little bit. So a kind of an insert into statement would be insert into a given table name, and then you can specify which columns you will be providing in parentheses. So I can say, hey, into the artist table, I want to, I'm going to be adding a new artist with a given ID and a name. And then I say values, and then in parentheses, I specify those columns that I said. So I'm going to be adding the artist ID is 99999, and the name is Joshua Nam Superstar. All right, so if I swapped the name and artist um, in this section, I could also swap them here in value. So if the data you're trying to add isn't in the same order that your actual columns are specified in the table, you could specify the column order in your insert into statement. Another thing that I haven't mentioned is the fact that you can actually add multiple rows with a single insert statement. And that would look something like this. You just say values and then you have a comma separated parenthesized list of rows that you're going to be adding. And I also mentioned the fact that you can use a select statement to generate the data that you're going to be inserting into a table. Um, the names of the columns of the rows returned by the select statement don't matter, but you need to have the correct column types and order to add to the table. So what would that look like? Let's say that um, I want to add all of the employees in um, of one table and suddenly they are now all artists in uh, my music library. They've all generated a song for the company. So what I would do is I would make a select statement. So here's a select statement saying select and then I'm taking their employee ID and just adding a big number to it just to make sure that it's different from all of the artist IDs. And then I also want the employee's first name from employee. So this is a select statement that will return an integer and a name for every row in the table. And this is going to get inserted into my artist with artist ID and name. So now all of my employees will have their own artist ID and their own name in my table artist. Uh, and that's basically all there is to insert into. Most of the time you're specifying your values directly by like actually including um, strings and text, but you can also use select statements if you can generate the data that you need to insert into but from data that's already in the database. Okay, so that's the insert. Next I wanna talk about update. So update changes rows that are already in the table. It doesn't add any new rows, it doesn't remove any rows, it just changes the rows that are already there. And an, a single update statement can change one or more records in a table. In fact, it can also change zero, but that's a lot less exciting a uh, case. The important thing is you need to use a where clause if you only wanna update specific rows in a table. So you, so the way that this looks is, let's say I want to say, um, I want to update my album title to add an exclamation point to the end of every album. Let's say I want to be really exciting. 
Um, I want all of the titles of all of the albums to now have an exclamation point at the end. So I would say update album, which is my table name, set, and then I would say some sort of assignment. I would say set title. This is saying for each column, set that title attribute to be equal to the old title and an exclamation point. The um, pipe pipe character is concatenate um, two strings together, make um, merge those two strings together. It's a lot like plussing two strings in Python, but plus means specific things for math, and so they used a different operator to make it really clear that that's only involved with text. All right, here's another example so, um, where I actually say instead of changing all of the rows, only change some of them. So for instance, I can say, hey, let's say I really don't like rap music. Okay, so any um, track name that has rap in the title, I want to actually just set the length of time to it to be zero. I want to I want to make the length of all of those tracks zero. So I would say update track set milliseconds equal to zero where name like and then this is the um, the pattern. You know, a percent sign means zero or more characters. Rap zero or more characters. So this will now change all of the rows in my track table to have milliseconds equal to zero if they have wrap in their name. And the other thing is you can set multiple columns. You can change multiple columns with a single update statement. So I could say, oh, and by the way, I also want to set their file size for all of those records to be bytes equals zero as well. All right, so first index card question. What does the pipe pipe operator do? All right, this is a bit of a silly question. Um, all of those are really mean the same thing. It's basically taking two text fields and putting them together to make one larger text field. What you call it doesn't really matter. But the important thing is that you know what this pipe operator does so that you'll be able to use it in consequent homeworks. Okay, so we've talked about creating inserting rows into the table. We've talked about um, updating those rows. The other thing we need to talk about is deleting those rows. Okay? So what does delete do? Delete removes rows from a table, removes records from a table. And a delete can change one or more records at the same time. And you use a where clause to specify which rows should be deleted. Otherwise, it'll delete all of them. So if I say delete from genre, this removes all of the rows in the table genre, which is probably not what you want. But let's say you know my, uh, my hate towards rap music continues, and I want to remove all of the genres that have the word or the um, letters RAP inside them. I would say delete from genre where name like rap. All right, and this will only remove some of the rows from the table. And that's actually it. Delete and um, update are very similar to each other. But right, the other thing that I want to talk about, um, because it might come up a little bit when you're playing around with SQLite, is the fact that when you choose to insert rows into a table and you don't specify values, what should be put into those um, empty spots? Well, the obvious thing to put into those empty spots would be null values. Um, however, what about if you don't specify a value for the primary key, right? So the rules for a primary key is that they must have either a, it, it has to be unique and not null. So if you don't specify it, what should SQLite do? Well, it could give an error and say, hey, you're supposed to give me something for a primary key. You didn't give me anything. I'm not going to accept this insert statement. Another way to do that is to use the auto increment keyword. So when you specify a, um, a table, you can say, hey, this is my primary key and it should auto increment. What does that mean? It means that if I don't provide a value for a particular column when I'm adding in a row, just take the last row and um, the row that has the largest value for that column and make it one bigger, make it a slightly bigger so that I have a unique number, a unique ID for a particular row. Um, and so what you do is you combine this auto increment word with an integer primary key field. That's the only time you're ever allowed to use auto increment is with an integer primary key that basically says, hey, this is meant to be like my ID number. Every row should have a unique value here so that it, Primarily, I can use it for joining with different tables. 
And so the way that looks is you say create table, table name, column, and then you have a column something, whatever the name is, integer primary key auto increment. This column has to be an integer. It's your primary key, so it has to be not null and unique, and it auto increments. If you don't provide it, it'll take the largest thing in there and make it one bigger. Now, one little caveat that I learned is, should you use this auto increment keyword? And from the website um, for SQLite, it actually says, um, auto increment uses up a bunch of resources and should be avoided. All right, but it's really handy to have, um, not have to specify the ID, not have to look up in your table and figure out what the largest index is. Instead, just make it um, um, one bigger than it, the largest one already there. However, SQLite does something really nice for you already. If a column is integer primary key and you don't specify it on an insert into, it will autofill a unique value even if one isn't provided. That is the promise that SQLite promises. And that sounds a whole lot like the promise for what auto increment does. The only difference is that auto increment guarantees monotonically increasing values, meaning every column that you, or excuse me, every row you add in will have a bigger primary key than the one before it. But if you don't specify auto increment, it just promises a unique key. So it can do some tricks without having to always check what is the biggest thing in the table. Um, so in general, if you're trying to work with SQLite, um, and you want to use this kind of autofill capabilities, I recommend avoiding auto increment unless you really need to have your new rows always have a larger primary key than your older rows. Normally that doesn't really matter. All you need is a unique ID.